Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about something crazy underrated, math.noise. It's perfect for smooth random animations and effects you didn't even know you could make with it. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to make with math.noise is a smooth camera sway effect. And you'll start to notice a pattern throughout this video. Every animation is built around math.noise, run service, elapsed time, delta time, and other cool frame dependent tricks that will bring these visuals to life. But to make this camera sway effect, we are going to insert a local script and starter player scripts and go from there. Okay guys, so this is our camera sway effect done. We're getting our run service, our camera, our elapsed time, our strength of the sway. And so every frame uh, in here pre-render, we are adding delta time to our elapsed time. And then we are making a 3D noise vector. So for X, Y, and Z, we are uh, getting this math.noise function and then sending an e time for each of the respective axes so they are ind independently changing noise values over time and then just multiplying it by our strength and then finally setting the camera c frame to itself and multiplying it by the offset so going ahead and play testing your game you will see that our camera has a nice little sway effect for whatever this uh, might be used in and if you guys were to stop it, well, then you would have a connection variable here and then assign the connection here and then somewhere down the line. Or you could just make a whole function in a module script to just disconnect the connection uh, just like that to stop it. Well, let's say you wanted to add more depth to this script. Well, we are going to do that by adding fall off. So I want you guys to imagine that you have an explosion happening in your game. And the closer you are to that explosion, the more your camera is going to sway when it explodes. And then the farther off you are from that position, then it's not going to be as violent. Well, we are going to do that now in this script. And so all this takes is a few more lines of code and it won't take long at all. Okay guys, so this is our script done with the fall off. We just added a max distance variable and an origin. So for now it is vector.0, which is the middle of the world. And then I upped the strength to five and then also getting the camera position and the distance between the camera position and origin and also clamping the fall off so there isn't any negative numbers doing the same thing as before but just multiplying the fall off and the strength so if we head into our game there is a lot of sway to our camera but as we walk farther and farther away you start to notice that it becomes less and less until after the max distance it is no longer there so there you go fall off is added Okay guys, so the next effect with math.noise will be a random movement script using our UI. So here I have a text label that will move randomly around our screen and will also be customizable. So as usual, you just insert a local script and we will start with it. Okay guys, so this is our script done. We are getting a elapsed time for the animation, a speed for how fast it moves from 
one position to the next and also we'll use it for color which i will get into in just a second and then distance which is the max distance in pixels the label can drift from its base and then this seed x and seed y here they are random seeds to make each axis move differently uh, for the 2d noise so here every frame we are incrementing the time by delta time multiplied by the speed and then offset x and y here we are generating a smooth offset between the ranges of negative one and one using math.noise. And so why we are uh, multiplying it by two and subtracting one is we're remapping math.noise. Uh, so instead of it only returning positive values like zero, 0, 0.5 and one, it instead gives us uh, negative values like negative one uh, and also zero and one. So it allows it to uh, have a negative value to go in the other direction and so we're applying that here in the new position just adding a uh, udem2 value to the base position and multiplying the distance to it and then finally setting the position so pretty basic so if you go ahead and go into your game you will see that the text is moving around in random positions so this could be used for like a mini game of some sort with frames or it could also be used as a uh, notification system so we can play around with the values here speed five that will make it move around really fast and so if we allow it to move farther from the base position then it will be just going really fast uh, around the base position so pretty pretty cool so moving along with the random movement trend this next script, we are going to make a random part movement. So it'll be like a tween service kind of thing where the part will move up and down, but just randomly. So this is if you want the part to move up and down in random increments instead of always being in the exact same position like you would see in tween service. And it's almost the exact same thing as the other scripts. So let's just get it done. Okay guys, so here is our script done. A lot of this, I'm not even going to explain what it does because I've already explained it a few times now. But what you really gotta know is this offset Y thing here, which we send in our elapsed time into math.noise and we multiply it by two. So when we multiply it by two, the range is instead of uh, negative one to one, it is now negative two to two. So depending on how the, the range of the y-axis you want it to move on, you can multiply it by that. And so we're just adding uh, that in a new vector onto the start position. So here we have our part and we can go into the game and you can see that the part moves in random increments. So sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Sometimes it goes up by quite a bit or a little, you know, it's just very random. So another random movement uh, to make your game feel more alive if that's what you're going for. Okay, guys, so this next system is really cool. And this system I call the trail generator. And it basically generates this random moving line from a start position to an end position and it looks really really cool so it could be used for anything in your game any effect whatever you guys want it's just a pretty cool effect and so here i have a module script called trail generator you can go and get this down in the description and so basically it's kind of advanced i mean it's basically like what i've done this entire video just a few extra things on top of it but the key things in this script is we have an emit interval so you can uh, control the amount of parts that are being spawned every second. So without this, there are a lot of parts being made because it's running every frame. So we have this in place to make it a little more optimized. So 80 uh, dots a second. And if you were to set this to something lower like 30, then there would not be as many parts being made. So here we have a create dot function, which just makes a part and returns it. And then when we call start, we have a table full of dots, emit timer, connect to pre-render, uh, the time stuff I've, I've said earlier, and then checking if the animation is done. And if it is, we're going to disconnect the event and then also loop through all the parts, like all the dots, and then tween them out, which 
adds a nice little uh, tween transparency effect when they're done, when they reach their goal. And then down here is the actual movement. So we are clamping the elapsed time with the duration from zero to one. And so that gives us this alpha variable and then lerping it uh, from the start position to the end position and adding a new vector with a sine wave, which adds a little cool like wave movement, which makes it look really nice. The noise offset, like you've seen in other systems, a final position, creating the final dot. And then every uh, after one second, then we are going to destroy a dot uh, that is next in line. So how we can use this is a local script. We're going to get the trail generator here and then trail. Well, we're going to wait probably one second before it starts trail generator dot start. And so there's a duration. So we're going to say 15 seconds start position. We're going to say uh, vector dot create. Well, we're going to say zero. So it starts from the origin and then vector creates. We're going to make it go maybe 75, 5, and 98. So let's see how this looks. So after one second, it will spawn them. And as you can see, there is our cool thing there. And as you can see, the parts are kind of spread out and it is going to that origin. And then it reaches its origin and it tweens out. So that's pretty cool. So if we messed around with this, if we let it go even higher, it'll look smoother. So like 150, that's allowing 150 dots. It'll look a lot smoother as you can see, but it may be less performant on lower end devices. Uh, so if you set that to 30, it will not look as good because there's not as many parts being spawned. So it's not as smooth, but as you can see there it is. So another random animation you guys can add to your game is a random part size animation. And so there's not much to add to this script other than it just looks cool and it might be used to add more life to your game. So as usual, the good old local scripts and here we go. Okay guys, so here is our script done. We are just getting uh, three different sizes for all the axes. And so math.noise, uh, as I said earlier, is giving us values between uh, zero and one. The other, ca other case was negative one and one. But here we are multiplying it by 0.2 for the X and Z and 0.4 on the Y, which basically shrinks the range from zero to 0.2. And then adding a one at the front of this will basically make it so it'll be from one to 1.2 and for Y it'll be uh, one to 1.4. So basically that means that each axis will scale from, well, the X and Z will scale from 100% to 120 and the Y from 100 to 140 uh, from the original size. So it's just uh, getting those and just adding it here to the original size for each axis. So it's pretty simple. So if you guys head into your game, this is the result you see. Now, when I first made this and with the cube, it kind of looks something like a blob or a slime kind of thing, which is kind of cool. Maybe that could be used in some type of way. Uh, if you change the type to a sphere or a ball, it adds a little more randomness to it, just like this. But overall, it's a pretty cool effect. It could be used for a few different things. But yeah, there you guys go. Okay, guys, so the last thing I'm going to make for this video is going to be a grass wind kind of system. And I know there are modules that do this already, but this is kind of a fun thing to try out. It'll just add a little bit of random movement to our little grass blocks here to make it look like it is moving in the wind. So you should be using a module for this because it's probably a little more optimized and just overall better but this is just a little fun part if you guys want to follow along and copy and try it out then you can do so
But a couple things before I start, here I have all of my parts in a grass folder and the only thing you got to do is add a tag to all your parts and I called it grass. So we're going to be using collection service to get all of our parts. So let's carry on with the local script and I'll explain everything at the end. Okay guys, so in this script, we are looping through every part with the tag of grass. And so when we find that part and all those parts, we're going to add some data to a table, uh, which is the physical part, the original C frame and the seed. And also during runtime, if we have a part that's uh, given the tag, then it will uh, add that information as well and then down here we have a sway interval which is a optimization i put in just so it won't update as often so if we didn't have this in place it would update a lot more when it's not needed so it won't look as clean but from a distance this is acceptable because you won't notice it but if you went any lower than this so maybe like 20 or 15 you would notice the choppiness a lot more so this is a good interval if you are keeping that smoothness uh, but you can't notice it from afar so every frame here uh, adding delta time to our elapsed time and then this whole thing here is ensuring that it only updates every 1 25th of a second or 40 fps so then we're going to loop through all of the grass parts make sure it is actually there and then getting an angle which is a unique seed to get a smooth oscillating value from negative 0.5 to 0.5 and then multiplying it by math.rad with 15. So the part sways at uh, 15 degrees on the negative and positive. And then finally setting the part C frame to its original C frame and then sending in that angle there. So if we head into our game and we head over here, you see we have some swaying grass which gives it a nice little subtle effect and it would be cool i should have thought of this but it's my bad i should have put in the wind lines which that would have been pretty cool along with this but uh, if you wanted some stronger wind this could be higher and then it will move in random points back and forth a lot more so there you go little cool effect but yeah there we go but yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video peace